Okay, so let's see how to utilize this. But before I can do that, I have to make one correction. So there is a mistake somewhere here. Yeah, here. This sign uh, is not correct. It should be plus. Okay, so make this correction. Let's see whether I can find out where it was before. Plus here. And this is okay. You see, it, it had a e to the i omega alpha t. There was a plus sign here. Okay, so omega alpha came with the plus i. So it should be coming with a plus i, not with a minus i. Okay, so that that was a mistake and that was creating trouble for me. Now, now this should be fine. Plus i and okay. Good. So this being corrected. Hmm. So we have omega alpha minus omega p. Okay, very good. So um, here we have this term. Now I want to get rid of get rid of all the multiparticle states, and actually I can do so by playing with this t. Okay, so I will choose a t such that this exponential factor provides the damping and it kills the entire contribution okay so for that what i'll do is i'll take t equal to minus t where my t is a capital t is a large time so it's a large negative time okay one minus i epsilon okay where epsilon is a positive number small and a positive number but a fixed one Okay, you choose whatever you like, but keep it fixed. So, if you do so, then what happens? Let's look at the exponential e to the i omega alpha minus omega p t, and now put t equal to minus t one minus i epsilon, where epsilon is greater than zero and t I will eventually take to infinity. So, if I do this, then I get e to the i omega alpha minus omega p um, times minus t plus i epsilon t, okay, which is same as e to the minus i omega alpha minus omega p t times i from here and i from there will give you minus 1, i square is minus 1. So, minus omega alpha minus omega p okay, epsilon t. Now, understand why I made this choice okay, uh, for this uh, t. If I choose some, if I choose a plus i epsilon, then it will not help because then I will get a plus sign here, and you'll see in a moment why I need a minus sign here. So okay, epsilon is fixed, some small number but fixed, and now I am going to take t going to infinity. Now, if t goes to infinity, this provides a damping factor and gives you zero, okay, and kills the entire contribution. Why? Because epsilon is positive t is positive, omega alpha minus p is also positive and that is crucial. So, this entire thing here is positive except for the minus sign. So, it is an exponential of a large negative number and which is a very small number. So, in the limit capital T goes to infinity, this exponential goes to 0. Okay? So, this damps out the contributions coming from multiparticle states. or rather kills
ok that is very nice because now vacuum is out multi particle states are out and only single particle states are left. So, let us go back here. So, in this sigma alpha now I have killed the vacuum this is out and all multi particle states are out. What is left is only single particle states. Okay, so, let us look at them. So, for a single particle state omega alpha will be equal to omega p. Okay, why? Because alpha um, p alpha will be forced to p by this delta function. I mean that was true earlier also. Okay, but earlier energy was energy of a multi particle state was different from a single particle state actually it was larger than a single particle state. But now because omega alpha refers to a single particle state with momentum p then the energy of omega alpha will be same as omega p because the momentum of alpha is same as p. Okay? So, this exponential provides you a factor of 1 because e to the 0 is 1. So, there is no damping and you get contribution only from the single particle states if you take t to be minus t 1 minus i epsilon. Okay? So, good this is a nice moment because we now know how to create single particle states. So, let me write this down um, this nice thing. what I have shown you now is that if you take this operator a dagger of p okay, with okay, let me a dagger t 1 minus i epsilon p and act it or hit it on the vacuum then I get the following. What do I get? I get um, okay, I will just write down the answer I am going to cancel out um, few factors of omega p that you can also verify it. Uh, so, I am not going to do the algebra it is it's trivial. So, you should get um, this times 1 over 2 omega p in the square roots and then you have p phi 0 omega times this single particle state. Okay? So, everything else is some number these are numbers complex numbers, but then you have a I mean in principle complex numbers, but then you have a single particle state here. Okay, so, the goal has been achieved I will write it in a more um, familiar form. So, I will write it as I will take this root 2 omega p to the left hand side. So, 2 omega p in the square roots times a dagger of t 1 minus i epsilon with an argument p acting on omega gives you gives you 2 pi 3 halves times this factor times p. Okay, this is for your interacting theory, interacting scalar field theory. Okay, and uh, 
real scalar field theory. And now let us compare this with what you had in the case of free theory. In free theory, we had the following. So, remember A dagger in that case did not depend on time at all. So, there is no subscript here and when it hits the vacuum, you get a single particle state. Okay. So, it is exactly the same thing except for these factors. Okay. Okay, good. So, mm -hmm. now I make a claim that this factor actually does not depend on p at all. Okay, so, I claim that this is independent of p. So, no matter what the momentum you what is the momentum of the single particle state that that object uh, remains the same. Okay. So, if that is a constant independent of p means it is a constant. Okay. So, I will um, so I will call it the following. So, it is a constant and I define that constant to be this root z okay. and di also divided by 2 pi 3 halves. Okay, it is a constant. So, I am defining that constant to be equal to this. I am calling root z uh, divided by 2 pi 3 halves and the reason I put 2 pi 3 halves is this factor okay, because now I have um, so, this is equal to root z divided by 2 pi 3 halves. So, this 2 pi 3 half will cancel this 2 pi 3 half and you will be left with root z times this single particle state. Okay. And if I take that root z to the left hand side and combine with a dagger, okay, so you will have a dagger uh, divided by root z. Okay and then you have exactly this form as in the case of single particle state. So, let me write it down. So, you will get 2 omega p a dagger t 1 sorry minus t did I put a t no minus t ok minus t 1 minus epsilon p and then over root z okay, where z is a constant. We will talk in a little bit more detail about z later times what was here uh, vacuum this is equal to a single particle state. Okay. Okay, so this is for your interacting theory. Let me write the equivalent thing for free theory. Okay, excellent. So, what we have basically done is we have um, see here. Mm. Here, when I wrote these um, summation over alpha, all these states cat alpha, okay, these cat alpha were assumed to be the basis states which were in states. Okay, you can choose out states or in states. So here they were assumed to be in states. Okay, so all these cat alpha they were in states. So what we have done here is we have created a single particle in state. Okay. And how did we achieve that? Sorry here. How did we achieve that? By operating with this operator. 
so i will give it a name i'll call call it a in dagger p and what is that that's just a dagger of p with minus t one minus i epsilon okay not nice divided by root z okay that's this so we have learned that we can uh, create single particle states by acting with a in dagger on the vacuum of interacting theory and get the single particle states okay so our goal is achieved and now we are in business but i should provide you with two proofs that are still pending that energy of a multi particle state is higher than the energy of a single particle state if both the states carry the same momentum and also that this object is indeed a is a constant okay it's independent of p so let's do that now so first is that e alpha is greater than e p if cat alpha is a multi particle state state with momentum p okay so i'll show this to you for a two particle state and from that you can you'll be able to convince yourself that this is true in general so let's take cat alpha okay and i'm saying it's two particle state so one of them has momentum p1 and another particle has momentum p2 and the sum of the two is what is p okay and the particles have masses mp okay mp physical masses so what's energy of the state alpha omega alpha is equal to so remember these particles uh, the energy and momentum of these states are um, same as that of uh, two particles which are non interacting with each other so there is no interaction energy and only only a uh, kinetic energy associated with uh, their momenta so it will be for particle carrying momentum p1 it will be this and for particle carrying momentum p2 it will be p2 square plus mp square and i should add to get the total energy okay and the single particle state with momentum p will have momentum p square plus mp square square root but p is same as p1 plus p2 right because both the states single particle and multi particle states have the same value have the same momenta and p is this so i will write it in this form okay this p is for physical this is not the momentum this subscript okay so since both omega alpha and omega p are positive numbers okay i will just look at this uh, this difference rather than looking at omega alpha minus omega p okay it will be slightly easier so what is this omega alpha square is this square plus that square plus 2 times okay minus square of this and square of this will be this square plus this square so this is p1 square minus p2 square minus 2p1 dot p2 
माइनस एम पी स्क्वायर ओके सो दिस इज दिस ऑब्जेक्ट एम पी स्क्वायर प्लस टू माइनस टू पी वन डॉट पी टू ओके गुड सो लेट सी सो दिस इज पॉजिटिव एनी वे द ओनली थिंग इज वी हैव टू वरी अबाउट दिस डिफरेंस सो हियर द लार्जेस्ट वैल्यू दिस दिस टेक्स इज टू p1 square in the square root or magnitude of p1 times magnitude of p2 okay, this is not equal to this is the largest value it can take okay because this is a dot product and cos theta will be 1 when both are in the same direction and in that case you will get this okay so the this is the maximum you can subtract out of these two terms and you see even then this term is larger than this because you have this mp square added which means that omega alpha square is greater than omega p square okay because this right hand side is positive and since both are positive omega alpha and omega p we conclude that omega alpha is greater than omega p for two particle states okay and that is what we had utilized in um in here okay when we wanted to damp out all the multi particle state contributions and also note that here t is a large negative time okay so it's really uh, in the far past okay so this operator a dagger is creating um I mean, if you are looking in Schrodinger picture, then it is creating single particle states in the far past. Okay, so that one of the pending proofs is done. Let's go to the next pending proof. Also, that one is also easy. So I'm going to prove this now. so i will show that if you take omega phi 0 p okay the, this object and that object they are just complex conjugates of each other okay because phi is real so it doesn't matter whether i show this is a constant or that is a constant um and whatever i am going to do you can do it for this there is absolutely no difference so i am going to show that this is equal to this some p some other p prime okay now given a single momentum p you can arrive at another momentum p prime by doing a lorentz transformation okay so suppose you have a momentum p like this and momentum p prime is in that direction okay so suppose you were looking at a particle single particle state which has momentum p and that p is in that direction and suppose you have another single particle state which has momentum p prime and p prime is in this direction so you can and suppose the magnitudes are the same then you can arrive from this one to this one to p prime by doing a rotation okay you just have to do a rotation about an axis perpendicular to this um, the, to the screen of your laptop or or whatever screen it is else if let's say another possibility is that this p prime has a larger magnitude okay so in addition to a rotation you will also require a boost so you, once you have done a rotation then you do a boost and by doing so 
you will be able to increase the velocity or equivalently the magnitude of the momentum. So, you can reach from p to p prime by a Lorentz transformation okay? and that is what I am going to use. So, let us say the Lorentz transformation um, that is needed to go from p to p prime is parameterized by the parameters lambda. Okay? So, lambda is a matrix whose elements give you the angles of rotation and the and the boost parameters. Okay? So, lambda contains all those all those parameters okay? because um, that is all you need. So, rotation will change the direction of momentum and boost will change the direction of the magnitude. So, lambda let me write matrix containing the rotation angles and boost parameters needed to go from p to p prime okay good so that is fine now i am going to utilize the fact that under Lorentz transformation the vacuum remains invariant. So, here is the vacuum of the interacting theory and the operator remember we are doing quantum mechanics. So, the operator u okay, that carries out this Lorentz transformation lambda. Okay, so, u of lambda when x on vacuum does not change the vacuum. Okay, so, that is it remains invariant that we have already assumed. So, that will be one input and second input will be the fact that phi is a scalar field. So, if you take phi of 0 okay, where 0 is for t and space both then doing a Lorentz transformation will give you again the same thing back it does not change. Okay. By a scalar we mean an object which does not change under that transformation. So, how do fields field operators transform? Again quantum mechanics they will transform like this. Okay. So, what do we have now? We want to look at this object. Let us look at this object. So, omega what am I doing? Yeah, correct omega and then instead of phi 0 I will write this left hand side because they are the same things. Okay. So, this is equal to this, but then u acting on vacuum gives you vacuum. So, this remains unchanged. So, this is vacuum then you have phi 0 and then you have u acting on the ket p which is u lambda acting on momentum. So, that is the state. So, all I have done is I have instead of writing this operator acting on the ket I have now written the ket. The ket is the one which carries momentum u the momentum you get by uh, Uh, changing p to lambda p. Okay, so, that is the notation here. So, that is the ket okay, and which is what we call p prime. Okay. So, you see that I have arrived at the right hand side and thus the result is independent of the p. 
okay because no matter what p prime you choose you can always show that omega phi naught p is same as omega phi naught p prime so that's a constant okay this implies that okay and that is what we have used earlier okay when we um, where was it when we wrote that this is a constant okay excellent so now we know how to create single particle states in an interacting theory and the next thing you should be wondering about is how to create multi particle states and that should not be very difficult once we know how to create a single particle state and then also you should ask how to destroy particles okay remember we had in free theory operators a and a dagger a dagger created single uh, created uh, single particle states and a would remove particles uh, from uh, from the state so we would also like to have those kind of states <coughs> sorry those kind of operate those kinds of operators and once we know how to create uh, multi particle states we would love to um, throw them at each other so that they can scatter and produce something else in the final state and then we can ask what's the probability of creating so and so part uh, final state when you create when you collide so and so particles in the initial state okay so these will be our next goals and we will meet in the next video